uh, welcome to the lecture 6 of module 1 of course RF transceiver design. We are discussing about basic of wireless communication. Uh, in the last class, we already discussed uh, OFDM in detail, uh, then how padding can be overcome and uh, issues related to linearity uh, requirement in power amplifier. So, in this uh, uh, lecture, we will uh, go further uh, and we will discuss about multiple access techniques. So, why multiple access techniques are important? So, there is a always uh, at any receiver or transmitter you require a two channel, one is a transmission channel and receiver channel. So, if you remember that how walkie talkie will work. So, in walkie talkie we generally press the word, press the button and then we speak. On other side they will listen and again when they will press we do not need to press. So, what we are trying to do? We are uh, switching the transmission and reception by pressing the button. So, this is the same thing when you automatically switch the switch uh, which is at different time, then there is a time division duplexing. So, here you are there is a switch before transmitter transmission and reception. So, the transmission and reception frequency might be same and you are uh, switching between transmission when you want transmission to happen and when you want receiver reception to happen. So, you can use the same uh, channel for transmission as well as reception. So, this is called a time division duplexing. Now, another uh, kind of uh, duplexing is a frequency division duplexing where you assign a separate frequency. Let us say for transmission there is a tra FT means certain band of the uh, channel is uh, uh, given to the transmission and certain band of the channel is given to the reception. And that because here we are dividing the frequency to do the transmission and reception, it is called the frequency division duplexing. And the, there is a FT means uh, transmitter frequency and FR, it is even base station has a this two frequency. Now, uh, this technique frequency division duplexing is required a dedicated, dedicated uh, frequency band for each transmission and reception. There is a, a talk of a full duplex uh, radio where the uh, means the diversity has been added and the transmission and reception frequency are same. So, uh, researchers are trying to make a full du duplex radio so that uh, we can efficiently use the bandwidth. So, in TDD, if we talk about TDD, allows a direct communication between two transceivers and a handy feature in a short range or local area network application. And the primary drawback if we see TDD is that the strong signals generated by all of the nearby mobile transmitter fall in the receiver band because your frequency is going to remain same. So, there is a possibility that your other receiver will be de desensitized, you cannot able to get the uh, reconstruction of the sig uh, receiver signal that you want. Then we will also talk much about the desensitization when we see the linearity of receiver. There is a for FDD frequency division duplexing, you need a two front end bandpass filters and are combined to form a duplexer filter. So, you need a duplexer filter and components of transmitted signal that leak into the receiver band are attenuated by typically only about 50 dB. So, there is a possibility that uh, the self interference, self channel interference will happen and that generally uh, is only 50 dB attenuated. So, if you have a, you are transmitting power of around 30 dBm, then if it has a, uh, it has let us say 50 dBm attenuation. So, uh, for example, in this, if there is a 30 uh, dBm which is uh, transmitted at one frequency, 
then uh, this duplexer which is doing the duplexing at other hand it is just attenuating that signal by 50 so that it will have a minus 20 dBm input which is much much higher than the received uh, signal which is which has an amplitude of minus 30 dBm or more M minus uh, even, even around minus 90 dBm. So, uh, that is important uh, when we are using a frequency division duplexing. So, owing to the trade off between the loss and quality factor of filters, the loss of the duplexer is typically quite higher than that of TDD switch. So, uh, here the TDD switch might have a 1 or 2 dB loss, 1 or 2 dB loss, but this uh, if we try to uh, consider the insertion loss of the filter uh, means duplexing filter then it is much higher than what exactly switch is done. So, TDD has certain advantage, FDD has certain advantage, some, some has the pros and cons and there is a possibility of spectral leakage to the adjacent channel in the transmitter output that we I already have told how the leakage happens. So, this uh, duplexing it is a widely used in our current mobile communication also we are using all the communication is using a TDD and FDD. Then there is a multiple access. So, here one catch there is a uh, two words one is a duplexing and another is a multiple access. So, duplexing is ha happening in order to define the transmission and reception at local end. However, multiple access is related to the complete spectrum. So, let us say there is a GSM spectrum of 25 megahertz which is available with the uh, supplier. Then it can divide in multiple channels to give to the different users and then different user again use either FDD or TDD to reconstruct the signal. So, here 25 megahertz is a GSM band and there is around 200 kilohertz each channel. So, each channel has a 200 kilohertz. So, there are n users which is 25 megahertz by 200 kilohertz can be uh, used. So, the available frequency band can be partitioned into many channels and each assigned to one user. So, here we are accessing the uh, spectrum uh, multiple by dividing the spectrum into the multiple frequency. So, here not that FDMA with FDD. So, when you add FDD because in FDD what you need is a again a two frequency. So, you need a two channel e for each user because you are giving one channel for transmission and one channel for reception. And in multiple user case, two way communication on the other hand, the channel assigned may remain a fix only until the end of the call. So, your channel means uh, two channels you need to give to the each user to uh, make use of uh, frequency division duplexing. So, uh, generally in order to again increase the uh, number of users, uh, this uh, TDD is also added. So, combination of FDD, TDD and FDMA will help us to uh, get the more uh, users. Another is a time division multiple access. So, let us say you have a one channel is given. Now, in each channel if you uh, again have a here it is written a transceiver 1, 2, 3, but uh, I can also mention it is a user 1, user 2 or user n. So, different user has a given a different time slot. So, for one time slot of uh, TSL, the transceiver 1 means user 1 is enabled and it he is also using a channel 1 and again another uh, user 2 is also using a channel 1, but it is transmitting the signal at different time. So, the time here also divided. So, this is called a time division multiple access. We, we are di dividing the time differently so that we can add multiple users. So, this is a 
TDMA that is a FDMA frequency division multiple access. So, third which is also used uh, widely that is a code division multiple access. So, here TDMA and FDMA has a certain limitation you cannot uh, use a more than certain number of users. You cannot assign the time and frequency to the many users. So, there is a limitation of number of users. But in CDMA, uh, this is uh, initially given by the Qualcomm, this multiple access technique uh, and nowadays it is widely used in our mobile communication. We are using uh, codes which are uh, orthogonal to each other. So, a certain code is assigned to each transmit receive pair and that code what it do is each bit of the baseband data is translated to the code before modulation. So, some uh, let us say CDMA code data sequence CDMA code uh, which are orthogonal and it is multiplied with the baseband pulse you will get a certain code and that is also uh, called as a Walsh code and we you will get a orthogonal codes for each user. So, each user has one code is given and this is called a Walsh recursive equation. So, these codes are provided to each user. Now, the same frequency band can be used. Here, let us say if, if when you try to receive the signal, if the two CDMA signal which is XBB1T and XBB2T are received, then what you will get is XBB1T multiplied by W1 that is one code given to one user, then another XBB2T uh, it is multiplied with the WT, then in YT it is a addition of these two. But the moment you apply the multiplication of W1T, uh, these both are orthogonal W1 and W2 are orthogonal. So, this will be cancelled out and you will only receive XBB1T into W1T. So, here XBB1T and XBB2T experience a different delays. There is a possibility that there is a different delays. One signal is coming before another. So, the YT this output YT might corrupt and you are when you are trying to get the signal XBB1 if XBB2 is corrupting the XBB1 you you will have a different delay spread. Now, this can be overcome if you try to use a very long codes and uh, that will help us to uh, get rid of this different delays. So, CDMA uh, because here we are using uh, techniques of spreading the spectrum, it is also called as a special case of spread spectrum communication, SS communication and the baseband data of each user is a spread over the entire available bandwidth. So, uh, many users can be accommodated when you are using a CDMA techniques. So, here for example, uh, it is also called a direct sequence DSSS uh, uh, spread spectrum and the chord is also called a spreading sequence or a pseudo random noise. So, let us say if this is a user 1 and it has a code, one code is uh, multiplied, then this user 1 uh, frequency it will occupy the wired frequency band. And then user 2, it is a it has a different code. This is a W, let us say W1 T and another is W2 T. It signal 2 is also spreaded over the uh, spectrum. So that is why it is called a spreaded sp spread spectrum. Now, when it is multiplied with the W1, then what will happen? You will get a signal 1 and signal 2 is called as a noise. So, because uh, it is we are not interested for signal 2, but anyhow we are trying we are receiving that signal 2 as well. That is why signal 2 is here noise and signal 1 is a that we desired our desired signal. So, if there are more users, 
here only two example is given. If there are number of users are increasing, then there is a possibility that this spread will increase, your noise floor is increasing. And that will, uh, while reconstructing the signal, so your receiver should have a uh, good uh, digital modulation or uh, reconstruction uh, feature to re reconnect, recollect the same uh, information that we have transmitted. So, this is a one of the drawback of using a, a CDMA. So, here a CDMA is a, its soft capacity limit. So, in FDMA and TDMA maximum number of users is fixed. I already told uh, this thing and, and in CDMA increasing the number of user only gradually increasing the noise floor. And uh, in near and far effect, the strong interferer greatly raises the noise floor and degrade the reception of desired signal. So, here power control is a must for multiple transmitters. So, you need to have a, a power uh, requirement for uh, reconstructing the signal. So, you might have also observed that previous uh, GSM standards which are using only TDMA, FDMA. Uh, that mobile power battery will work uh, for longer time compared to the mobile that we are using right now which is using uh, CDMA techniques, multiple access techniques. Uh, so, the power requirement is also high when we are using a CDMA uh, multiple access technique. So, we have seen the three uh, multiple access techniques TDMA, FDMA and CDMA and Mostly these are widely used. There is a another technique also. This is uh, uh, specific to the Bluetooth uh, that is called a frequency hopping CDMA, where the same uh, CDMA will happen, but the carrier frequency will hop. So, for example, at different time, different carrier frequency omega C1, omega C2, omega C3 are used and it is uh, as shown in the diagram, so the sequence is given, there is an oscillator and the signal is transmitted. So, it will hope at different frequency and if another user is also hoping to receive and when the both the frequency is locked at one frequency, it will connect. And uh, the once the connection is happened, then you can uh, do the data transfer. So, these techniques mostly in uh, Bluetooth are used. Same thing what I told is written. These access techniques can be viewed as FDMA with pseudo random channel allocation and the carrier frequency in each transmitter is a hoped according to the chosen code. So, there are different codes is provided to different carrier transmission and frequency hoping may require relatively fast settling in control loop of the oscillator. So, the connection and the disconnection will happen uh, quickly means it is very fast. So, it is uh, for very short duration and short time communication mostly these kind of techniques are used. Then uh, now last uh, part of the uh, our basic of communication uh, that we have started as I have shown the outline in the uh, third or fourth lecture. Uh, that is a wireless standard. So, there are uh, when we try to uh, make any RF front end or RF transceiver design, we also need to see that for what standard or what application we are using. And in each standard document, these are the terms which is given that you can easily use for designing or finding out the uh, specification. As I told in the first or second class, that specifications are important in order to start the design of schematics. So, that you will get from the wireless standard. So, one of the things that you will directly get from wireless standard is a frequency band and channelization, how various channels will be there. For example, Bluetooth you is using a ISM band 2.4 to 2.48 gigahertz and it has a channel of 1 megahertz, even more than 80 users can be accommodated. The data rate is also uh, given, uh, bandwidth is also given. What are the duplexing method that you should use that is also provided in the standards. 
uh, what are the type of modulation. So, there is a 64 qualm for its uh, getting highest data rate in A0 to 11 AG. So, what kind of modulation scheme you can use? So, for particular standard is given by the uh, wireless standard, what should be the highest output transmission power? So, standard specifies for Bluetooth, let us say for example, 0 dBm is the highest power and uh, some standard requires a variable output level to save a battery power. So, switching on and off of the power is also happening to uh, save the battery that is also provided in the standard. Then there is a also transmitter EVM and spectral mask is also defined. So, to ensure the acceptable signal quality there is a EVM that should because the moment you add the power amplifier or it will add the non-linearity the EVM of the transmitted signal from transmission itself will corrupt. So, that EVM should also be defined by the standard and spectral mask is also defined. Spectral mask is nothing but how you can mathematically define the sub band and frequency band accurately. So, that the co-channel and adjacent channel can easily be uh, cancelled out and you, you can uh, put the sharp filter before transmitting the signal. So, that can that is also defined in the uh, spectral when, when we are defining the wireless standard. So, the standard limits or unwanted transmitted components pulse or harmonics also is uh, discussed and provided. You can also estimate the sensitivity of your receiver because uh, wireless standard has also uh, talk about the maximum bit error rate BER max and you can estimate the sensitivity of your receiver when you are designing the receiver. Uh, another uh, point that is uh, receiver input level range that can also uh, be defined in the standard. So, the desired signal sensed by a receiver may range from the sensitivity, le sensitivity level to the much larger value. So, what is the range over which your signal will lie from lower to the maximum range. Another uh, important features that is a tolerance to the blockers. So, what is the nearest blocker that will be there and uh, how how much far in terms of frequency and how much far in terms of uh, let us say level uh, in dB per, per dBc, how much dBc level is the blocker should be is defined by the uh, wireless standard. So, here there is a reference sen sensitivity uh, and bit error rate and then another place there is a blocker which is there. So, that blocker might corrupt the signal because there is a omega 1 signal and uh, if there is another signal omega 2 that uh, third if there is a third order nonlinearity the 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 signal will come at the desired uh, band that we want to receive. So, there is a tolerance to the blockers are also defined in the standard. So, uh, here uh, I would like to conclude this uh, part of the basic of wireless communication and this entire du during this entire basic of wireless communication we have seen multiple things uh, initially various application and why we are going to study this course uh, is discussed then we also discussed that how RFIC can be uh, divided in different sub modules and uh, then uh, we also discuss about the very basic of wireless communication, basics of modulation scheme, then we also cover the digital modulation, what are the kind of modulation in current technology people are using, what are the different type of modulation that is uh, available uh, and we can have a what is the effect on the complete uh, transmitted signal and uh, in the reception? Uh, what is the problem of fading uh, when we are doing wireless communication? How can we mitigate the effect of fading by using OFDM technologies? And 
various issues related to OFTM. How can we overcome? We have also seen the mobile standards, uh, what are the various uh, standards and how we can use differently reuse the frequency. Uh, some of the multiple access and duplexing technique also we have seen in this class and the finally uh, some uh, standard parameters that is important for RF designer is also discussed at last. So, this will give the this uh, all four or five lectures will give you the overview that uh, will give you the base for the understanding of communication system. If you are uh, interested to go much in detail, you can go to the reference book which is provided and uh, go through the lectures which are on the wireless communication. Thank you for and we are concluding the module 1 of the RF receiver transceiver design. Thank you.